Lately, you'll have seen me in numerous training videos covering the topic of training volume and its impact on muscle hypertrophy. It's a hot topic on social media, especially among the evidence-based fitness community. As some of you may know, I co-authored a recent paper that scrutinized the resistance training volume literature. Our paper pushed back on some of the popular claims that more training volume always translates to more muscle growth, particularly after reaching a certain threshold. Now, today, I want to explore a slightly different aspect of training volume. Research often increases volume by simply adding more sets to the same exercise. For instance, a paper by Schoenfeld and colleagues upped the sets on exercises like squats and leg presses from three to five sets per session to create a high volume training approach. Similarly, Ennis and colleagues, the fascinating 52 set paper that received a lot of buzz last year, increased sets per exercise to as high as eight or nine working sets per exercise per session in order to increase volume. While these study designs answer very specific research questions, they might not fully inform practical training strategies. For example, when I increase training volume for my own programs or for those of my clients, I don't just add the same exercise. Instead, I increase the training volume by increasing the frequency and by introducing new movements. Adding a fifth or sixth set of squats in one training session, for example, can feel quite redundant. The literature's approach often lacks consideration for the benefits of varying exercises and increasing training frequency. To put it another way, imagine doing four different glute exercises for four sets per exercise, while research might only prescribe two movements for eight sets of the same exercise. Even though mathematically this increases the training volume, prescribing different movements may allow you to target the muscle group in a slightly different way, while adding more of the same movement can become quite redundant. In my opinion, the former example, which allows for more exercise variety, may have greater potential in leading to greater magnitudes of muscle growth. To gain deeper insights into training volume and muscle hypertrophy, I believe we need more studies that explore increasing volume through more frequent training and diverse exercise selection. For a more thorough analysis of training volume and to see our recent paper's findings, check out our monthly research subscription, Be A Brain. Not only do we delve into this research topic, we explore innovative research across a number of important areas of nutrition, health, and exercise science. Be A Brain provides simple yet critical interpretations of the most up-to-date research with clear summaries, easy to understand takeaways you can apply to your own training and nutrition programs. And for more information, check out Be A Brain.